So, hello everybody and welcome to the Hidden Cup 3 show match for today, starting at 5pm GMT. We have Gonzalo Pizarro versus Liloy in a best of 7. The winner takes $150 redos. Second place, the runner-up, takes $50. We will not know the identity of these players until the end of the series when all will be revealed. We do know, however, that both of these players are two of the 16 qualified or slash invited uh, players to the Hidden Cup 3 Grand Finals or the main stage, I suppose we could say. So we definitely have some idea of who these players may be. Although imagine if we debated you all and actually said, no, these are actually just two AI <laughs> barbarian AIs. And you couldn't tell because barbarian is that good these days. So hopefully you guys don't mind the new overlay updates that I've made. I've tried to put everything down at the bottom and in the middle. And I haven't casted like this yet either. I only figured out how to do this today, but I figure it is probably the most effective way to do it. And we keep most of the screen free as well. But let's go ahead and take a look at map, take a look at players and all of that good stuff. So, spawning up to the north of the map in blue is Gonzalo Pizarro. And he's playing as the Mayans. Down to the south or west of the map in the red, it is Liloy. Playing as the Mayans as well. Starting things off with a Mayan mirror match on Arabia. It's a pretty traditional map and civ choice right here. Holy so, Shemole's at his back. Oh, holy shamoli. I am back indeed, de Santiago. Thank you very much for the 26 month resub. My god, that is a long time. Thank you, my friend. Um, so yeah, we're, we're sort of doing bread and butter AOC to start things off here. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary at all. And uh, it's definitely a good way to ease us into this series. The most standard of maps, the most standard of sieves. And of course, that means that uh, we'll sort of see who is the... Well, I guess when you have a mirror match, you sort of really get a feeling for who might be the mechanically more skilled player. Um, but that also depends on how evenly balanced the maps are and such. Taking a look at Gonzalo Pizarro's map, uh, we can see that it is actually pretty tasty. Mm, yes, uh, I would like this map if I was playing uh, in Gonzalo Pizarro's shoes. <laughs> Feels so weird saying these names. He's got such an easy warlock to the front and left, uh, although he will have to be careful of that little hole there. And if he doesn't scout that, he might find himself in a little trouble, but it might be that he does scout it just now. Uh, it's going to be super important that he sees that that wood line does not go to the edge, and indeed he does. So good scouting from our blue player and he's making sure to scout very thoroughly around his base. So the left side is a very easy wall off that will secure stone, it will secure gold and then obviously the right side is a lot more open but he can wall in towards the town center if he needs to and then later on in the game he'll need to expand out into the front of his base because that is where second and third gold spots are. This hill is going to be quite an important feature uh, and in fact maybe even this hill quite an important feature of this map outside of Gonzalo Pizarro's base. Um, that's a great staging point and pushing off point for Liloy and so there could be some contention over that hill as the game goes on. Liloy's map on the other hand also looks pretty damn sexy. Uh, almost as sexy as that smooth jazz we were playing before this game started. Although uh, maybe it didn't even come close. But look at that. Great scouting again from Gonzalo Pizarro. He sees that there is only, well, let's try again. Only 791 stone, uh, gold in that gold mine. It would be quite fantastic if there was 791 stone in that gold mine. But alas. Um, which means there is a drush on the way. Or, well, definitely a drush in fact. I was going to say, or a man at arms play, but you don't typically just take 9 or 10 gold in this case from a gold mine if you're going to do a regular man at arms play. But uh, Leloy has walled off very nicely here. You can see that he's got a deer patch in the back, which is really nice and already taking advantage of that, as well as a safe gold. I don't like his wood situation, though. Um, he does indeed have a very, very easy wall, but it does not make for a good wood situation. Um, this wood here is his kind of first wood line, I suppose you could say, but it's also forward, as is this one, as is this one, and uh, we could see some potential issues with the wood lines for the red player as the game goes by, um, as obviously right now they are safe, 
but could be ranged as things progress. Gonzalo being denied some walling opportunity here on the left side, but bringing a villager over to uh, to make sure he closes that off successfully. And remember, he's got to wall this left side, otherwise he will be open out there. So uh, yeah, Lelois map does have a, a nice closed uh, sort of area right now. Um, but he will have to obviously expand later on and it's the same story for Gonzalo as well in this play in this case uh, both players will have to expand forward uh, one way or another to secure those resources later down the line Famed hammer welcome back Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> it's almost like you wrote that message to yourself as well because you just subscribed for two months in a row. So uh, I can definitely welcome you back as well. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Gonzalo Pizarro also going with the Drush here. Both players sort of mirroring each other. And uh, this Drush is really going to amount to very little, all things considered, because both players are fully walled. And I think both players would have successfully been fully walled irrespective of the rush here. Uh, a little bit of um, a HP advantage for Leloy, but uh, Gonzalo backing up right now, looking to take a, a fight here. Um, but the end result of this rush is that both players are essentially going to neutralize each other while they go up to the next age. However, I think for Gonzalo, he may want to keep these militia safe a little longer as uh, he is on gold right now and he's already up to the feudal age at 50 percent so if he can avoid taking this fight until he reaches the feudal age he'll get the man at arms tech perhaps and then clean this up more effectively and have some man at arms on the field but it looks like he's not interested in taking that approach he is going to force the engagement here and he does get off to a good start as well the blue man at arms getting a good start to that engagement and uh, come off way ahead very good micro from the blue player there as he will successfully clean that up uh, but like I said both players will essentially just neutralize each other here while they advance up to the feudal age and interestingly uh, Liloy going up with two additional villagers so his feudal time is going to be a little slower all things considered but uh, I think that's no problem because uh, both players are of course fully walled feudal age is in for Gonzalo now and I'm wondering what's going on with my chat there. Oh, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. I just saw Feudal Age. I was like, where's the rest of the message? <laughs> I was uh, messing around with, with settings earlier on. And, well, now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if I may have broken something along the way. Uh, half the sub alert is covered by chat. Thanks, Polska fan. I'll, uh, I'll fix that after this game. And uh, apologies for that. I Again, like I said, I was fiddling with overlay stuff earlier and... Well, now we're realizing where the mistakes were made. But uh, Gonzalo and Liloy obviously rush into FC. Uh, you can see both of them floating plenty of food. And uh, nice that Gonzalo sneaks his 2 HP scout through here. Um, he's not going to tell him all too much. But hey, you never know what he might see later on. Uh, for now, of course, the expected blacksmith and archery range for both players as they start moving up towards the castle age. And Gonzalo, of course, is a little faster up to the castle age because, of course, he did go up to the feudal age faster as well. And that is reciprocated into age three. So uh, we're going to see the second archery range for Leloy. And, and so far, you know, all things as they should be in a mirror match. Both players mirror sieves and mirroring each other you know i'm wondering if perhaps there is a mirror in the center of this map and they're just sort of miming into it and it's just that they're playing themselves uh, but that's kind of the interesting thing about mirror matches because it sort of it comes down to the little things rather than you know strategic decisions in a lot of cases and i, I know there is definitely going to be some strategic decisions um, mostly around map control in mirror matches but the since the meta game is kind of so fixed it, it's really about who executes it better and, and who actually can find those small advantages and help them to snowball one after another until you have a big enough advantage to win the game um now speaking of advantages the, the blues player score is huge and we might wonder well why is it so huge and i think that's probably going to come down to scouting and you can see indeed he does have quite a lot of additional map visibility that could be a factor in the late game. For now, it's really not going to be a problem for Leloy. And he can always scout out later on. But 
a blue player has found some extra gold and he's found uh, a lot more of the map so the score is a little bit misleading I suppose right now with a 300 score lead you think blimey it surely he's already won the game but no um, the score is an unreliable indicator and uh, we certainly shouldn't be <laughs> certainly shouldn't be looking at the score too much I think that's a great example as, as to why um, <laughs> Oh dear, you guys. You guys in the chat. A lot of Kappa Prides out there today. and I've got no problem with that. You can you can be as Kappa Pride as you like. And uh, I'm not going to judge you. Uh, Lelois has got one villager out here though. And I'm wondering what his, what his game plan is there. He's protecting it with the, the crossbows on the hill. And he's got to be a little careful because he doesn't have Bodkin Arrow yet. But now it's in. He can take that. And uh, this villager, I wonder if, he's if he was trying to sneak. Uh, but Gonzalo Pizarro would have seen that, and he's probably thinking to keep a, keep tabs on that villager, or if anything, even kill it. That would be the, the better scenario here. And, um, yeah, if he can actually chase that down and make sure that villager doesn't sort of come up on his flank and surprise him with, with some kind of nasty forward or something. You never know what, uh, what shenanigans could be going on. But uh, generally speaking, so far, just a standard transition into crossbows. And, uh, you know, I wonder at some point if we will see a strategy difference between these guys in terms of whether or not they go into eagles here or whether they stick to going plumes. Because plumes is pretty much the meta at the moment. But depending, of course, on how your map situation looks. If Gonzalo Pizarro can't secure this gold, then he's definitely going to want to consider getting a castle out here to try and lock this down a little more. And that obviously feeds quite well into his pr probable strategy of going into plumed archers this match. However, eagles can always be interesting if, for example, the crossbow numbers get quite hard, uh, quite high, and you perhaps fall behind in archer production. And then perhaps you might want to consider eagles, or better still, uh, maybe a mangonel. Obviously, eagles could be extremely effective should the map be wide open and very easy to raid uh, but we're yet to see if uh, if that's going to be a problem for either player because they've not placed any castles and they've not sort of expanded forward yet so for now some trading blows here but uh, i'd say red's definitely coming out uh Oh, I was going to say, I thought he was coming out ahead, and I think he is coming out ahead in the crossbow trades. Uh, but of course, that's skewed a little bit, perhaps, from earlier on with the, the drush. But uh, Leloy gets in through the walls there, and he's really disrupted that gold income, which is a real pain for Gonzalo. You can see he's got 115 gold in the bank, which is enough for a few more crossbows. But if he doesn't get on the gold quick then he's going to be denied more crossbow production. That could hurt long term. For now, they're even on military. So uh, they're very much mirroring each other in, in many, many ways here. But Gonzalo will come forward, get the gold mine here, secure a little bit more, and uh, try and potentially trap these crossbows in the back of his base. Obviously, he can keep tabs on them as they're trying to escape through this, this back exit. Upgrade-wise, Gonzalo does not have the defense upgrade on these crossbow. So he's got to be careful taking this fight. It is 10 against 12. So that should be enough to push Leloy away at least. But Leloy, oh, feigning. He's feigning. That was a that's a that's a beautiful little move right there. Gonzalo thinks he's left. Gonzalo thinks he's gone. But no, Leloy went back. And I think this was this was a really smart play by him. It looked like he was going out, and actually, no, these guys are still sitting in the back here. And perhaps. They'll remain unseen for a little while. And Liloy will make an attack on the front or something. There it is. And then he'll use that distraction as an opportunity to come in at the back. And perhaps hit this gold or wood line, for example, once again. So I think that's that's a really nice play by him. And he's keeping those tricks away back there for, for later on. Of course, now he has to be a little bit careful because... He doesn't want to get caught by this larger army of Gonzalo since he's been split into two parts. He is coming in though with the crossbow. And there they are, three villagers dead on the gold mine. And one more going down on the farm. This is immediately going to make Gonzalo turn around and, uh, and try and deal with this threat at the back. And I guess he's sort of kicking himself now for not making sure that he, uh, he saw those guys off. And even on the front, the crossbows are forcing the gold to go idle. So we're seeing a lot of gold issues for Gonzalo this game. In terms of locking it down and securing it. Shot it. And here we go. Crossbow's out on the left side again. They'll find another villager kill. But he does have to be very, very careful not to get caught in here. And if I was Gonzalo at this point, I'd perhaps consider closing this off. 
as uh, he certainly wants to trap this army and make sure he takes them all out. Zale just getting a wheelbarrow now, which is kind of on the late side. And I've got to get used to the, the resource bar being down here now. I mean, it's good because it's all in one place, but it also, um, it also sort of keeps distracting me because my eyes keep flicking to the top of the screen and the, the resource bar isn't there. So Lilloy, he's going to get dispatched here, but he will take the hill bonus. And so he'll do the maximum damage on the way out. Neither player bothering to micro because they both have ballistics as of now. And so Lilloy probably got the most he could possibly get out of those crossbows without, of course, getting out here, which he perhaps could have done. But uh, we do see... We do see Lilloy at the Forward Siege Workshop, and I think this is again another part where, or another another feature of the map here that is really worth exploiting. The fact that Gonzalez's golds are so far forward, and of course Lilloy, he's had the opportunity to do this because he's had good map control, mostly because of this this uh, push into the back of Gonzalez's base. It kept him busy, it meant that his army stayed at home, it meant that he never applied some pressure on the other side, and it meant that those villagers could safely get across the map and put that siege workshop down and start pressuring things very quickly. Mangano from Gonzalez coming out now, as you would expect, of course, and uh, Gonzalo's just yeah. nailing his own deer. Poor thing. <laughs> what did it do to deserve that? Caught in the crossfire. And again, he's nailed this one as well. I think this probably, well, I think he's probably done that just to avoid any misclicks later on, but still, um, you got to feel bad for the deer here. I feel like they didn't deserve that, you know? <laughs> Total waste. Um, right now, we're seeing... Three TCs for both, I believe. I don't think we've seen a fourth TC from either player. And uh, we'll see the first castles coming up fairly soon as well. Looks like Gonzalo may be the first to place his castle down. He has a little bit more uh, stone in the bank right now. And oh, got to be very careful here. He's going to lose his mangonel. If he's not careful, Lilloy going straight in. And now two mangonels coming up from the back. That's going to be a great forced engagement as Gonzalo has to back away. And Ballistics is absolutely going to punish that. A beautiful push from Lilloy taking the uphill engagement there. And going balls deep on that mangonel. I mean, he really went all in on that. He knew that his second mangonel would seal the deal. And there you have it. Gonzalo now forced to build a watchtower on his stone at the back. That's devastating. That's really going to slow. That's really going to slow his castle down. And, well, that's Hera. Okay. Gonzalo is Hera. Uh, confirmed. That's also probably why Hera and uh, Tato have delayed their show match till tomorrow. Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know if it's Hero, but I just I think it's quite funny seeing these guys back going back and forth. But second watchtower coming up. And, I mean, that's just beautiful for Leloy. He can pressure this wood line. He can pressure this TC. And I think, well, Gonzalo's days may be numbered at this rate. It may be that Leloy can deal a finishing blow in the next couple of minutes here with this siege on the front. Look at that Stramanganel's being queued up. And Gonzalo might be ahead by five vils, but the pressure is certainly mounting. And Leloy could be in a great position to, to exploit that very soon. He's certainly denying two gold spots. And I... I depends... It, you know, because we don't know who the players are, it's difficult to really judge how they're going to play or with their castle um, but the first castle coming down could be forward and I think it will be in fact these villas yeah th these guys are going to be building a castle right because I want to see a castle somewhere around here perhaps preferably on a hill but you know denying the gold because the gold is under so much pressure right now there it is the castle on the front it is in a fantastic position it ranges the tc it ranges the gold and after gonzalo just lost his entire army and he's forced into going to eat skirmishes there's no way he's going to be able to contest that castle and of course he could build his own castle which he's going to do now up on that hill uh, which i identified earlier was going to be such an important part of the map for gonzalo but, uh, yeah, I mean, just think he could have had that castle a few minutes earlier if he wasn't forced into building these two watchtowers back here. But, uh, yeah, castle here is in a great spot. It's denying one of the golds now. And Imperial Age is coming in for Gonzalo. Now, that is definitely going to be a sigh of relief for him once he reaches Imperial before Leloy. 
that means he's going to have the best opportunity to get rid of this castle. If he was behind to Imperial now, that would be extremely worrying. But because he's first up, that does mean that he'll have the first Treb out, even if it's only 22% difference between them. But it does mean he'll have the edge on taking this castle down. He will, however, lose this TC and be forced back. But at least he has secured the gold to the left, and he still has his main gold at the back for the time being. When are we getting a Manganel cosplay? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know about that. I mean, why would I ever want to cosplay as the inferior siege weapon? I mean, come on. Ask me when the trebuchet cos cosplay is going to be, and, uh, and I'll give you the real answer. But uh, Gonzalo here, popping out with the Manganel, just died to the castle, unfortunately, but obviously a Lelois lapse of concentration there. As he nearly lost both Manganels. Shot it. And good awareness as well. I don't know what his... Uh, yeah, he's got good line of sight. Um, guessing he did town watch earlier, but uh, yeah, Lloyd gonna lose a couple of couple of units there. And well, at this point, players aren't too worried about. There we go, Eagles coming out. I was just gonna say, players aren't too worried about um, losing their crossbows now. I mean, obviously, you want to keep them as live as long as possible, but if they do die, it's not the end of the world. We've actually got the Eagle Warrior switch for Gonzalo and for uh, for Liloy as well. Gonzalo, first thing he's going to do, I assume, will be to get a Treb. There it is. But he's a little preoccupied with the two Manganels here. Good splits. And that's going to be enough to push him back a little further. But, oh, wow. Look at that. Do you see that tower there as well from uh, from Liloy just ranging that gold? That is beautiful. This is so awkward for Gonzalo now. He has got so much work to do. Because this gold is going to run out very soon. And he's going Eagles. Eagles are pretty gold and intensive units. And at least compared to, to Plumes. And so uh, he is definitely going to have to make sure at all costs he gets one of these golds back in the next few minutes before that main gold runs out. So we've got Eagles transition for both. Um, I definitely like it for Liloy. Obviously, Gonzalo is already in a pretty defensive turtley position. So getting Eagles out now is a great way to exploit that and make sure he stays in his base. However, the sprawl of Liloy, the lack of walls from Liloy, could leave him susceptible to eagle raiding and i'd be curious to see if gonzalo goes straight for the raid or if he tries to um perhaps take on any of these crossbow or try and fight any of Leloy's army first and i think the raid would probably be a pretty good approach for gonzalo of course both players moving into eagles and interestingly Leloy keeping them back at home for now which kind of indicates to me is expecting that raid to come and he wants to be able to deal with that as quickly as possible. And Blind El Dorado coming in already for Gonzalo as well. Don't think El Dorado is done yet for Liloy. In fact, Elite Eagle Warrior isn't even done yet for, Elo uh, for Liloy. And I tell you what, that little timing difference on that Imperial Age has really made a significant difference overall. Uh, it was only a 20% difference to Imperial, but Gonzalo is the one who's able to get his first raiding attempts going and those eagles are straight into the back now and Leloy, I thought Leloy would probably be a little bit more cautious about walling perhaps and, and these guys I don't know if they're, they're probably on stand ground to be honest because um, yeah he's noticed now but uh, stand ground is kind of what players are defaulting to to deal with the the issue of the, the right click attack acting a bit more like patrol but uh, yeah um both players, similar upgrades. Obviously, you can see Gonzalo has the attack upgrade advantage at the moment. And Gonzalo is actually pushing back now. And this is really impressive. This is really impressive. I mean, Leloy did so much economic damage, denying a lot of gold. But it doesn't matter in the end because Gonzalo is pushing straight out. And as long as he maintains that attack advantage as well, which he's going to do as he gets plus two now, he'll trade effectively against these eagles. Shot and, you know, maybe maybe everything up until this point has just been a big song and dance, a big show and tell. Because the real game is only just starting, and this is the Eagle Warrior engagement right here. Obviously, defender's advantage for Leloy is going to work out nicely in his favor. Gonzalo is trading way better, though, overall, and that's it. Just like that. G-G. 
I mean, yeah. Uh, it's almost like everything up until the Imperial Age didn't matter. <laughs> it, it, you know, you could just, you, we should have just played Deathmatch. And I think we would have had a, a, a faster resolution to that game. That's really quite something. And it just goes to show, if you are not one step ahead when it comes to eagles, and it just goes to show, if you're not one step ahead at walling, then uh, that's it. It's over. It's over faster than it... I, it's crazy. It's crazy. I feel like mines are one of the few civs, and Aztecs, of course, one of the few civs that can actually do that, you know? Be so pressured... And as long, as long as they've got an eco behind this, this forward castle denying this god doesn't matter. All you need is a few eagle warriors and an upgrade advantage and the game is yours. I, I've massively oversimplified that of course, but yeah, I mean it's just crazy how quickly these things escalate. You know, we go from like 0 to 100 in a fraction of a second once we reach the Imperial Age. And Gonzalo there gets the first win after Leloy did look really dominant throughout. Um, quite interesting how that played out, really. But then again, Eagle Warriors, man. I mean, is it is it that is it that uh, surprising, really? I'm not sure. I don't think so. <laughs> Goodness me. Was it really over for Red? Uh, Blue Shot, maybe not, you know, maybe not. Um, the, the biggest problem here is you only have plus one attack, so that's kind of an issue. And yeah, he had Defender's Advantage here, so he could have perhaps reinforce this and been able to repel the army of, of blue if we look at Leloy here he had 15 eagles in this fight against 18 for Gonzalo now imagine he reinforces with four more he suddenly has the numbers advantage and he maybe turns this uh, he was getting raided here as well he was getting well perhaps raided out to the right side very soon obviously he'd just been scouted by these bills um, but, you know, you'd think maybe he could stabilize from that position. So, yeah, perhaps a very early GG, which is a really good point, actually. Um, I kind of did get surprised by that. But, of course, ah, yes, I didn't notice. El Dorado, of course, being done, too. El Dorado is obviously huge. And uh, perhaps Leloy just didn't have the resources for it. And he didn't. So, it's just a mystery as to why, because he had greater map control the whole game, too. Anyway. Anyway. Um... Yeah, El Dorado is something I, I forget to check for sometimes, even though we didn't even note that, that Gonzalo had El Dorado there. But well played to Gonzalo. Welcome, everybody, to game two between uh, Gonzalo Pizarro and uh, Leloy. We are currently seeing Gonzalo Pizarro leading 1.0 after a very quick turnaround in game number one. And that was a very swift ending to that game it happened in the blink of an eye and it even looked very good for Leloy throughout but Gonzalo manages to uh, edge his advantage in the early Imperial and from there snowballed the game extreme extremely quickly however going into game two we're going to see a completely different map a completely different approach to the the match because we are on cup now this is Leloy's home map and we saw Cup quite a bit so far since I've returned to streaming last week. Uh, because last week, casting the Empire's Showdown tournament, we saw a lot of this map throughout. And uh, it's quite an entertaining map. We'll go through the map in more detail later, but uh, we'll see Gonzalo Pizarro here. He's playing in the blue and he's playing as the Koreans. His opponent then in the red is going to be Leloy playing as the Japanese. Thank you, Elvenor. Zach is back. For the 17 month resub. I am back indeed. And uh, I said I was going to start streaming every weekend, and I will be streaming every weekend um, from now on, as long as it doesn't conflict or have any uh, issues with, with anything else going on. So next weekend, I will not be streaming because Hidden Cup will be going on, and obviously. We'll watch that on T90's channel. But for the show match here today, yes, we are back. And uh, so, yeah, uh, Leloy here. I, I wonder how long I'm going to get Zach his back messages for, though, actually. I'm genuinely curious. I wonder if, like, you know, in six months' time, there'll still be, like, Zach is back messages <laughs> coming out. But, uh, yeah, so 
the map being cup obviously um it's quite an entertaining map we we have the two sides to the 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 map here and we've got this sort of sandbar in the middle dividing them uh, both players going to have to fight over both sides and uh, of course the left side being the most significant one because we obviously have um, a lot of gold here and, and basically only a little bit of food salmon particularly on the right hand side so Right side, definitely good for fishing, definitely good for map control, but left side, ultimately more important long term as we see the extra gold. But this is interesting. Liloy sending a villager across the far side of the map and he's going to dock right about there. That is an unusual dock location. Now, normally you'd kind of expect players to dock as close as possible to their town center so that they can have as little time walking and uh, maximize their time fishing. But uh, Leloy's gone for this forward dock, which is, I guess, unlikely to be scouted by Gonzalo. And also... Um, Allows him to be a bit more aggressive on this left side as well. Gonzalo, on the other hand, is playing rather surprisingly. And uh, that is because, well, as you can see, he's only got four villagers on wood. He's got one villager walling his map. And a second villager, in fact, walling his map. And it doesn't look like, given that he's built a mill here, he has any interest whatsoever in building a dock. So... We're perhaps going to see some fast tower aggression or some perhaps even some regular old land aggression or maybe even, just depending on how he decides to play this, some kind of FC play into turtle ships, who knows, into a castle drop, into war wagons, who knows. War wagons, interestingly, actually perform very well against boats compared to most land units. Can you give us in-game points? I can indeed, and apologies for, for not pulling that up. For some reason, it doesn't come up automatically. Uh, but yes, the, the score is is now showing. So, um, Liloy also taking the time now to wall up as well, and that's interesting. We can see, however, that he is docking and he is fishing, so he's going to definitely be taking some advantage from the fish, but he has also got to be careful because the scout can basically harass these fish eternally. Fortunately, they're Japanese fishing boats, so it's going to take them a very long time to go down um, compared to, to your regular old ships. But I expect then Leloy, seeing all these walls, is going to anticipate some kind of fast castle play. That's definitely what I would be anticipating seeing this. Farms are just coming down now, and yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird, isn't it? But obviously, Gonzalo has got a master plan, and that master plan may very well only begin in the Castle Age. So, Leloy can take the fish advantage for now, and uh, maybe he'll mirror his opponent by following him up to the Castle Age quite quickly. But already committed to the Feudal Age here, Leloy will be going up first, and uh, we'll see that fourth fishing ship come out. But if he doesn't scout, a dock then he has no reason at all to even make a galley here and if he scouts around the whole shoreline and can verify that Gonzalo does not have a dock up then he can very quickly change tact and he can very quickly um, avoid investing any more resources than necessary into boats which is just going to slow him down he is however adding a second dock at home so perhaps he'll add some more fish from here or perhaps um, he will commit to making galleys anyway, um, as he's got four villagers on gold right now. But he may very quickly change things up. Um, at least he's Japanese, so he gets half-price mills. And he can very quickly add a, add a mill on this berry bush and get the food income going from farms as well if he needs to transition quickly to castle. Um, interestingly, though, a blue player, one villager on stone now. Okay. Is he on gold? Yes, he's on gold with three. So this looks like you're sort of typical fast castle kind of build he's even pushing the deer meanwhile Leloy docking out on the right side he's got three docks now and he's going straight up with fish so he has got one galley in queue but he's fairly confident that there are no docks from our blue player and he is indeed correct about that and I think that is a really good adjustment from Leloy I think that he is now of course going to be very well prepared to follow up to the castle age with the additional food coming in from these fish. Mill going up now, as I said, you very quickly transition into that too. And the feudal time for Gonzalo, if he didn't see it coming already, 
he certainly sees it now. A feudal age of timing of of um, about 12 minutes, as we saw there, it certainly indicates the fast castle. Now, what I fully anticipate from Gonzalo here is the castle. He's already on stone, as you can see, and I imagine we will see war wagons. And the reason I say that is because, as I said earlier on, war wagons are legitimately good at dealing with ships. When you consider the cost of a ship, and I've said this a few times, but just to reiterate, in the, well, I say I've said this a few times, not today I've not, so I'll say it again. The resources you spend on a ship, 90 wood, 30 gold for a galley, 120 HP and 6 attack. Obviously that'll improve with war galley and galleon. Now, a war wagon on the other hand, it can rival the galley. It can certainly rival the galley in terms of performance. If we take a quick look at the Korean tech tree, because I can't remember the exact amount of a war wagon since they get the 15% less wood cost. You can see the war wagon is 94 wood and 60 gold, but they have more base at, uh, health and more base attack. What they do lack, however, is pierce armor, uh, as the galley has six, but um, they can certainly use war wagons on both sides of the map, whereas galleys are just sort of stuck on the pond. Whereas since we've got amphibious terrain, war wagons can go everywhere. And who knows, maybe we'll see some turtle ships as well from Gonzalo at some point. And of course, that's always a joy to see because turtle ships, not only do they look badass, uh, but they are. They are objectively badass. So, <laughs> we'll see what his next move is. Obviously, the castle will come up straight away. Although, he might be interested in adding a second or third TC first. Um, depending on whether or not he thinks the Loy is going to be up quickly behind him. And at this point, I couldn't tell you what I think he's going to do. I assume he'll make a castle first. But, he can. He, he might not be in a huge rush to do that. Uh, still, attack evens out when counting Pierce armor. Exactly. So the uh, the war wagon is pound for pound a little bit strong. It does cost a bit more as well. Um, but you know, having a castle has its advantages. Obviously, the attack bonus against ships, the ability to lock down the map control as well. And there's Gonzalo trying to get his dock up. Will he get it? I believe he will. He might lose the villager for his efforts, but uh, he is certainly going to get his dock and he's perhaps going to queue a war, uh, sorry, not a war wagon, uh, a turtle ship. Indeed he will. And, you know, just watching this makes me think Gonzalo could be the Viper, actually, if I had to guess. And I say that because watching Empire's showdown last week, we saw Viper doing almost this exact strategy. So if I had to had to throw out a guess at game two to on the identity of Gonzalo. I would say it's the Viper, but you know, there's 15 other players it could be, and I haven't watched all of them extensively over the last weeks, but this is definitely a Viper-looking play right now, given what I saw of him last week in Empire's Showdown. Look at those Japanese fishing ships, though. My god, they're hench. They're absolutely hench. Three cannonballs to take them out. No fear. And uh, even following up with the guard tower, great use of a demo raft, but good reaction from Gonzalo there. We'll take out the guard tower. And uh, again, like I say, I think this is this is Viper, right? Like this is a very Viper-esque play. I'm wondering then if he's going to commit to making more towers because this will slow a castle down. It certainly will slow a castle, but I'm wondering if he'll just make the one tower and then follow with a castle so that he can use the tower as a defense for his villagers if he needs to while he's building it. But uh, yes, Leloy at the moment certainly ahead, but Gonzalo looking to try and get some fast momentum now with this Castle Age progression. Like I said, Leloy did react very well though. He did get up to the Castle Age very quickly as well. And now we've got more turtle ship harassment coming in. Run, run for the hills, Leloy. Run for the hills. Oh, they're so badass. They are so badass. Anyway, uh, only two turtle ships out, but it's enough to really push Leloy back. And actually, we're seeing another tower, so maybe we're not going to see war wagons in the castle at all. But Turner in the chat is thinking that Tati is Gonzalo. Well, you could be right on that as well, because just thinking about the differences I'm seeing here between Viper play, Viper would have gone for that castle, I think. 
Although that's not to say the castle isn't going to happen at any point here. But uh, yeah, what, what I'd like to see ideal is another tower from Gonzalo out on this left side. And then he can actually make sure to cover the docks here and prevent the uh, fish from doing or dropping anything off. Although that said, the lawyer actually doesn't have any fish left because they've all been taken out already. So uh, turtle ships are definitely very slow. I mean, as the name suggests, turtle. Uh, not known for being quick turtles, but oh the demos that's gonna be huge Does do some significant damage Could certainly turn the tide for Leloy here and allow him to take these turtles out But um, when I say they're slow, I don't just mean slow to move I mean their movement speed is indeed slow, but I also mean that they are slow to, uh, to, to Train they're slow to get going. They're slow to tech into all that good stuff Gonzalo really making the, the plays here though and uh, making sure to repair his turtle ships up which is a really good attention to detail. Also slow to die. I mean, yeah, that is true. That is true. Absolute tanks they are. 200 HP, 6 melee armor, 5 pierce armor. And we'll see now that castle perhaps from Gonzalo as he comes forward with those uh, nine vills sorry well, six vills but there's already two forwards so that's eight in total if I can do my quick maths and uh, yeah I don't know maybe we'll see the castle out on the left side somewhere just to secure some gold perhaps already going with the siege workshop though and obviously for now just more turtle ships in queue keep in mind turtle ships do splash damage as well he just have to make sure he I say he has to make sure that he takes out the demos, but to be honest, I'm starting to question my logic there because why bother with the demos when the, de the demos don't bother you? You can tank a demo successfully and still clean up the, the um, war galleys anyway. Well, I have to question whether or not focusing on the demo has any merit whatsoever. Super, super good stuff for Gonzalo so far. And this tower creep as well is now starting to get really annoying for Liloy as he takes complete control over this right hand side even using the turtle ships to get some bonus damage in there and the turtle ships even splash damaging onto the house you love to see it you love to see it do the cannons of turtle ships have ballistics looks like it um well I don't think he has ballistics but I don't think they would would come with ballistics uh, by default, and I have no idea if they're affected by ballistics, but I would assume they're not affected by ballistics because it's a cannonball, but look at this. Oh, oh, the monk play. That is great. I was ex I was thoroughly expecting Gonzalo to nail those villagers building that tower, but then Leloy brings out the monks, and I, and I think again. <laughs> great castle drop, though, from Gonzalo, and uh, this feels like a little bit of a revenge piece from the last game. With Leloy castle dropping on the front of his base, he's going to get his revenge and do the same. Unfortunately for Leloy, oh, the demo's coming out. I see what he did there. He, uh, he might have tried to get the demos to hit the villagers, but they weren't in range, of course. And, well, they went wasted in the end. But um, what I was trying to say is that uh, the Japanese player doesn't really have like an ace up his sleeve, like the, uh, the Mayans or the, the Aztecs. He can't just slam down a bunch of barracks once he reaches the Imperial Age and win the game. Uh, no, he's got a much harder fight for it at the moment. So, second TC coming up for Liloy. And I guess he's just thinking, well, I need to eco this out because at the moment, Gonzalo cannot have three TCs. It's not possible. Oh, he does have a university, actually. Um, I'm not sure if he did do ballistics here, but if anything, that ballistics is definitely going to be worth it for his towers and, and his castle. But, um, yeah, he, he knows that Leloy probably isn't on multiple TCs because turtle ships are so expensive. He's dropped a castle, he went towers, he went siege workshop. Uh, it, that kind of play is not the kind of play that you can afford to add TCs as well. Although, with that said, Gonzalo could add TCs now uh, once he gets the stone for it. But opening like that in the castle age definitely leaves very little room for uh, economy expansion at the same time. That said, Loy could tower up on the left side. And it seems like he's just trying to eco it out on land. And that's kind of hilarious. He's actually getting housed right now because he's losing the houses at the front of his base. He's actually going to lose the TC here too, as well as the blacksmith. 
And of course, if he's going to lose that front TC, he's got to add a second TC somewhere. Otherwise, there's no villager production left for Leloy. And speaking of villager production, I mean, he's got so much wood and stone right now. He could very easily add more town centers if he needs to. But you have to weigh the, the risks of that as well. And there definitely is risks right now of adding more TCs. The risk being, of course... That uh, Gonzalo just steamrolls him with greater military production. And since those war wagons are now coming out, Gonzalo is not stopping military production anytime soon. This looks like Gonzalo's game. I mean, he, he's so far ahead right now. And Leloy's one tower here has been spotted as well. So that's going to be countered by, obviously, a guard tower. So that's going to be neutralized very quickly. And that villager might even die before he gets the tower up. So I think there's no returning for him there. He's done. He is toast. And I think Gonzalo really well and truly has this game right now. Maybe if Leloy can get some conversions, he might have a chance at you know, trading off on the water a little bit. But with Siege coming in, with war wagons being queued up as well. And Leloy really with very little answers other than these monks at the moment, which just got nailed by the, by the turtles. I don't see it, to be honest. I don't see it. Just commit. Kill the... Okay, you got the conversion there. That's fine. And that's GG. Leloy calls it right there. And, and things got out of hand very quickly once Gonzalo reached that castle age. And I've got to say, I liked his approach. I thought he'd do the castle earlier, to be honest. I thought he'd do it earlier. But the fact that he did the guard towers first, I thought that was really well thought out. Obviously... Guard towers can cover a much wider radius than a single castle uh, for a similar amount of stone. And then the castle follow-up later on just to seal the deal on the town center was really nice. Uh, obviously, then unlocking the war wagons to follow up. But before all of that, getting up the war, uh, turtle ships nice and early. And uh, even though Leloy reacted quite quickly and, and followed Gonzalo up to the castle age quite quickly as well, I was really pleased to see that Gonzalo was able to make those turtle ships work uh, in the short space of time that he had um, up to the castle age before his opponent joined him there. And uh, Leloy, I mean, he did his best on the water. We saw the demo ships, we saw the, the, the war galleys, but none of that was enough to contest the terrific turtles, as I like to call them. The terrific turtle ships. They're, they're just amazing. So, yeah, Gonzalo was toast and... Uh, Sorry, Leloy was toast, and Gonzalo sails through, excuse the pun, into game three with a 2-0 lead. Because we are into game number three, Gonzalo Pizarro versus Leloy. And uh, we have a best of seven, of course. So first of four wins gets it, and uh, we're on game three with a 2-0 lead for Gonzalo. So uh, Gonzalo hasn't got it just yet, but he's certainly on his way to getting it. As we move on to what I presume is islands from the minimap. But I will just double check. Yes, it is islands. Um, so yeah, Gonzalo going to be playing in the blue here. And he's off to the east of the map playing as the Vikings for this one. Leloy in the red playing as the Vikings as well. And I think that's interesting because Vikings are very viable on cup. And they have been very successful on cup. Which of course was the last map that we just saw. The players in that game, they obviously went for Koreans and Japanese, both very strong water naval sieves. But uh, Vikings was obviously reserved by both of them, interestingly, for islands. And uh, I think that's quite interesting indeed. Italians yet to be picked. And uh, I think that's interesting because Italians also quite capable of standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Vikings. But uh, Vikings both saved by both players for the uh, islands game here and yeah. we'll see how this plays out we're certainly going to see some nice classic old school galley micro um that is unless we see some kind of fast castle shenanigans into longboats it's not completely out of the question that we'll see a fast castle into longboats it is perhaps a little bit more risky um but that sort of is something that i would expect gonzalo pizarro to do if we consider Gonzalo Pizarro's play in game one and in game two. He took the more turtle and then steamroll approach. The turtle and st the patented 
tato turtle and steamroll approach and what i mean by that is and and something that you notice a lot in tato's gameplay is that he will give up map control completely and while his opponent is investing into military and you know getting ahead in that map control tato will just boom go up to the imperial age or in last case go up to the castle age take a tech advantage and then push out at an incredible speed and we kind of saw that in game one with the eagles which is kind of expected for the mines anyway but he did uh, sort of give up a lot of map control that game and especially in game two with the turtle ships and the um, the, the castle play so we might see something similar from Gonzalo here and I think if it we do see the fast castle play on islands from Gonzalo it certainly gives us a bigger indication of who this might be as for Leloy well I'm not too sure at the moment I haven't seen anything sort of uh, distinguishable about Leloy at the moment but I'm very curious to know what you guys in the chat think and of course the Italians are banned uh, which is a great point. Um, I even had it on the overlay between games. Thank you for reminding me. So, of course, there is no Italians if they are banned. Uh, but I still think it's interesting that, of course, we didn't see Vikings last game uh, because Vikings are also a very strong uh, sieve on Cup. But, uh, yeah, we're going to see both players docking, of course, for now. And just look at the distance between the docks. They are a stone's throw away. And, of course, neither player knows of their opponent's location quite yet um, but they'll know soon enough I'm sure as soon as they send that uh, first fishing boat out to explore um, they will find each other very quickly um, yes absolutely uh, Vil, Kil Vil Kills Mill um, I was saying earlier on that if we don't see that fast castle play from Gonzalo which is something that I'm vaguely anticipating then the classic Galley Micro War is certainly something that could be on the cards here and something that I could personally look forward to. And, you know, when I say about that potential fast castle play, well, Gonzalo here proving that uh, my theory may very well be hogwash because, well, he's already up to the feudal age. So there's no fast castling here. And in fact, we will be seeing what appears to be the makings of a classic galley war. And uh, that's, that's going to be exciting. That's going to be exciting. So that kind of blows my theory about who Gonzalo might be. And, it, you know, it could still very well be Tato. It could still very well be the Viper. Could very well be the other 14 players who qualified. And uh, my guess at this point is as good as yours. Uh, but like I say, I'm, I'm curious to know who you think they might be uh, as we go through this series. And obviously it will be revealed at the end of the series as well. But uh, yeah, Leloy's second dot coming up. Have they scouted each other yet? That's a big fat no, but uh, Gonzalo is going to be happy with this uh, feudal time, that's for sure. And Leloy going up with two additional villagers, but sacrificing a lot of his upgrade time as a result. And, you know, normally that wouldn't be the end of the world. That wouldn't be a big deal, but it's kind of a big deal when you're this close to each other. So let's see how it plays out. And they've both just seen each other now for the first time as they're gathering the first, the same fish. And Gonzalo's going to be rubbing his hands together here and thinking, mm -mm, tasty. This is a game for me. Another game for me. You think Blue is Hero? We did see some Hero Micro earlier, actually, in game one. We saw him, like, uh, making his villagers vibrate back and forth. And uh, that was kind of a, a Hero telltale sign but uh, he's not the only player to do that although he is known for doing that so that's the first fishing ship going down and Leloy's going to hunt down the second one as well here as he gets off to a fantastic uh, sorry as Gonzalo gets off to a fantastic start uh, he might fall behind a little bit if he ends up getting uh, 2v1 on the galleys but he can reinforce galleys very quickly here as he's already got the advantage in galley production he's more focused on chasing down the fish and disrupting that right now and of course that is significant for many reasons if Liloy is just pushed off a fish he is going to have a hard time getting enough food for fletching and he's going to have a hard time even getting enough food to keep villager production going so things could snowball out of control very quickly 
if your fish are lost. And for Leloy here, that's three fish down now already. Four, in fact, my bad. And Gonzalo has a blacksmith on the way. It's already up, in fact. And Fletching, well, he might be able to afford it a little bit sooner than his opponent here. We'll have to wait and see as the reinforcing galley comes out. And that's going to turn things in Gonzalo's favor here. As Leloy is trying to micro these boats down. But Gonzalo has the edge. 4-3 to three here on the water. And Leloy has to back away. This isn't your, uh, your typical water map where there's quite a bit of distance between the players. They are sitting on top of each other right now. And as such, less galley micro is sort of taking the foreground. Both players are so close to each other that galley micro is not really possible. But this is great for Leloy. He's got the army advantage right here. As Gonzalo does reinforce... But Leloy wants to keep pushing this. Fletching is done, however. That's going to give him quite a substantial amount of DPS compared to Leloy here. But Leloy going to make sure to remove those fish from Gonzalo's hands on his way out to the north here. Fletching for Leloy is not done, however. And although Gonzalo's lost his fish, he lost them after Fletching was already done. So... For Gonzalo now, he has got a good advantage. There's still a galley out on the left side as well, which I think that's part of the reason why Leloy got ahead here in galley numbers, because obviously Gonzalo was one galley down the whole time, assuming they were equal on production, of course. They're 10 for 10 on KD, obviously, 7 for 7 on military, but Gonzalo has that fletching lead. And that's going to allow him to pull ahead if things continue this way now. Good micro on this one out here. While the main group tries to close the gap. And uh, yeah, I mean, Gonzalo at this point should be able to start pressing his advantage. Leloy, though, working on getting that blacksmith up now. Still doesn't have the food, though. And he might want to cancel a villager. I think he did, in fact, cancel a villager. And he's going to idle that TC. This is how important fletching is. Idling his TC till he can afford it. And then he'll let the town center work again. This means that uh, Gonzalo may pull ahead in villagers slightly here, just by one or two. And uh, Leloy going to have Fletching very soon, but... Yeah, Gonzalo obviously looking good up until this point. Thanks, Overlay Guy. Amazing work. Uh, I am Overlay Guy. <laughs> I, I am Overlay Guy. I I, uh, I did this. I edited the, the files and made this happen. Uh, I did ask Overlay Guy how to do it, but uh, but I'll take the credit for actually doing it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Gonzalo. Wait, that's that's kind of funny. There's a rubble coming from there. I didn't notice that before. Oh, we are all Overlay Guy. Overlay Guy is may Overlay Guy be with you. <laughs> So, 14 to 13 on the galleys right now. Gonzalo, three villagers ahead, though. And that's definitely going to be helping with that castle age transition. Gonzalo, of course, had more food income over the long term as well. And I don't know if we can actually see... Uh, it would be nice to see total food gathered on here, wouldn't it? That would be really cool. But you can see the side-by-side -side comparison anyway. Gonzalo's eco here. A little bit further ahead on the food required to get up to castle. He sold his stone, bought some food, and he'll be up ASAP to the castle age. Oh, sorry. I didn't even notice um, which, you, which one you were talking about. <laughs> I even made my scoreboard today as well, which I, I took inspiration from a football scoreboard. I was like, let's pretend we're real sports since all the football is cancelled now. Um, <laughs> yeah, Gonzalo Just trading back and forth for now Leloy still has the uh, the KD advantage a little bit though But Castle Age is in now for Gonzalo And like I said, that's going to be a little bit faster than Leloy here Leloy does not have a market He is not selling stone And he's got a huge float of gold too So I'm, I'm questioning right now Leloy's eco decisions. This is a little sloppy. And this could really hurt long term if he doesn't fix this soon. Because Castle Age is so important on water. 
you know, when you've got however many boats now, 16 boats, 17 boats, as soon as they all get Bodkin Arrow and as soon as they get War Galley, it's a huge power spike. And with a rush distance this short, you have to be contesting or at least following up to the Castle Age very quickly behind your opponent. And Liloy's eco is abysmal. Where is the market, Liloy? There it is. It's so late in comparison to Gonzalo. Bef until that market comes up, he can't buy food. He could have been Castle Age so long ago. And uh, Liloy now going to have to buy the food to go up. You can see him doing that right here. And he's clicking up to the Castle Age while Gonzalo is already 80% of the way there. And this is looking dominant for the blue player. And I think, you know, if he quickly and decisively takes out these docks from Leloy, there's a very slim chance of Leloy getting back into this game. One of them is fire for sure. Bombay Gypsy thinks it's fire versus backed. Well, we will see. Bombay Gypsy, we will see. There are a couple of demos in this dock. And that is actually a really good point. Uh, Turi noticing that one. If he lets them out now, would be perfect. But no. No, he missed his, missed his shot. Now he's going in with the demos from behind, but it's going to be too late. They're already going to be dispatched very quickly, and that's it. Y you only get one chance to pull that kind of move. And he missed his chance. Leloy here. Leloy is done, man. He's done. I don't want to call it this early, but he, I feel like he is done. He is going to lose this dock. And he might actually have a really good opportunity to get a demo here. If he can get the demo out. Gonzalo backing off. Oh, his boats are so clumped up. This could be a good demo. Okay. Yeah, I forget demo refs really don't do that much to, to war galleys. But still, Gonzalo now will take out those docks in quick succession. And uh, Liloy, well, Liloy's going for plan B. Plan B, if in doubt, get a landing. Can Gonzalo deal with this? Has he seen this? And I was saying he's done. I mean, he's definitely done on the water. But Liloy has already made his play. He's already gotten down to the south of the map. And Gonzalo's going to see those scouts now. And now he's going to be like, oh, damn. I should have seen that one coming. Barracks going up in response. And can he get this TC up? Yes, he can. That's a safety net for now. Sees the villagers here. And uh, needs to respond to this quickly. Yeah. Only lost one villager so far. As he wars in the barracks builder. Just to make sure that he can get that up. Knights now as well. We've got monastery. Two stables down here. Very nice landing from Leloy. We're obviously very focused on the water for a while, but as soon as things go south, well, it's time to react. And oh my goodness, Leloy. I love it. I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan. Oh yes, look at that. Manganel on the wood line. Villagers sitting ducks. What is he going to delete? The market. Too late. He's already lost four bills. TC from Leloy going up on the gold. Things just got things just got intense for Gonzalo. You know, things are going swimmingly. You know, just minding his business, just winning the water as you do. And then bam! From the back. Manganels, monks, siege, knights. Yeah. He needs answers, he needs them quick. He's trying to get a tower up here, but it's not going to happen. Manganel's already in position, already taking it down. And Gonzalo now in panic mode, rebuilding the market that he had to delete to save his villagers. He's got very little food right now, so uh, getting any response in, in terms of scouts or something is going to be difficult. He's not got much space to build up to the north of, of his map. The south now under control by Liloy. He needs to get some fish out, perhaps, on the water and uh, get some more food income that way. More importantly, though, he is pushed off of gold. This gold, devoid of villagers. This gold, denied by Leloy. Where's his other gold? I don't see it. I believe, I believe, in fact, he only has the two golds. That's interesting. Usually there's three, but... Uh, there's obviously the two in the middle. He could always go for those. 
But uh, yeah, I'm wondering if maybe this this two gold pi ma ma blah, blah, two gold mines spawned together here. Because uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six there, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, interesting. So it is two. It is two mines. It no, it's not bugged. It's just two mines. I know this is a hidden cup version. I don't think maybe change the gold generation or something. But uh, anyway, monks out for Gonzalo. Trying to get the conversion here. Nice. Manganel shots going in. Killing his own units, of course, under the TC. <laughs> Gotta love it. Can he get a conversion here? Nope. TC on fire, man. Those knights diving in deep, but making sure that these Manganels have got the opportunity to push this TC down. Gonzalo adds a couple of fish on the water, but yeah, no gold income at all. He's stuck right now. He's going to try and get a castle up. That's his next best option. You can always use the market to sell, of course, as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, Red's, Red's uh, push there. Yes, he lost quite a few scouts and a couple of knights. But I think his game plan there was all beautiful shot from Gonzalo. That is perfect. That is exactly what he needs here. He needs more of that. Keeps his TC alive at all costs. As Leloy moves over to the left side to pressure the TC down here. As I was going to say, uh, I think Leloy wanted to just make sure that his, uh, his Manganels could push the TC. But Gonzalo responded really well there. And now he has enough stone for a castle. Where will it go? I mean, the, the best place for it would probably be here, but there's buildings there, so he's going to go down here under the TC. And in fact, actually, no, here would be way too risky anyway, because it would just get ranged by the Manganel. He's got the units to defend the castle. He's got to put it next to the TC so that he can hop inside. Villagers continue to build it, but the Manganel's doing good damage. And Liloy has really got Gonzalo in a tough position right now as Gonzalo is desperately trying to build that castle but it's stuck at 32% here we go Gonzalo could it be doubt could it be doubt working on getting it up here but the TC is already half health and dying quickly he'll need to repair the town center as well another mangonel shot from Gonzalo and it's perfect that's the second two for one now and the monks here taking huge damage Liloy asleep at the wheel. The spearman coming in trying to push the last mangonel down, but at the very least he'll get the castle now. Oh, that's a huge, huge F for Liloy. Three monks thrown away for free, basically, and the castle does go up for Gonzalo now. This is a huge step for Gonzalo if he manages to push this back. Liloy is pinned. If Gonzalo gains control of his island, Leloy has no way back, really. Does manage to get the castle, of course, and that TC will follow now. We'll, we'll go down. This TC next to come under fire. And uh, Gonzalo here adding a second siege workshop so he can maybe get another two for one out on this left-hand side. Two towers here going to make that harder. Obviously, they'll range the mangonels, but maybe Gonzalo can add a couple of... Uh, well, well, I was thinking maybe he could add a couple of berserks, but he actually still has no gold income. He's still not taking gold here. He must be using the market quite heavily, and we can probably check that if we go to the market settings. Okay, there's still a pretty good price for, for wood, food, and stone. I guess he's sold a little bit so far. Another two for one on that mangonel, and... Huge kudos to Gonzalo for these Manganel trades. The guy is on fire right now. He's out of gold to repair though. And that means that Manganel will go down to the scouts, which definitely hurts. Guard tower up for Leloy too. Things are happening at a breaknecking pace, but my goodness, Gonzalo landing across the other side to take some gold. If he can't have his own, he'll take his opponents, but I'm not sure about that decision to take this one. Why take that one when there's plenty of gold here, which he knows can't be contested? However, that doesn't really matter. He's going for a castle here, and that's going to be a bit of a, bit of a revenge castle. Of course, going to be able to range these towers, but Leloy's noticed, and of course, he'll follow with a guard tower as well to try and stop it. And I don't know, that's a, a very risky castle from Gonzalo, and I feel like 
that's the kind of unnecessary risk that might lose him this game. Another fantastic Manganel shot, nearly getting another two for one there in one shot, but he will indeed get a two for one by the end of it. But still, questionable, questionable decisions. He is, however, going to be able to potentially get that castle up still. Of course, he can continue to make villagers here, and you know what? These villagers at the back are not going down fast enough. So Gonzalo's risk does pay off, and that is huge. And in fact, it's so huge that it's GG, because Leloy calls it right there. My goodness, what a game. Fantastic game. You know, there's me thinking, well, classic water match. Just going to be war galleys and a quick GG from Leloy. And, well, Leloy certainly dragged it out, made it interesting, gave us some entertainment here with the landing on Gonzalo's island, and he looked very good doing it. Of course, pushing Gonzalo off of gold was huge, and uh, Gonzalo's defense was impeccable. The castle going up, the fantastic Manganel trades for our blue player here. And Leloy was kind of grasping at straws a little bit with these guard towers, trying to stop this push. But this castle was the final nail in the proverbial coffin for Leloy. And, well, I mean, it's just from there, what, what, what's Leloy going to do, right? I mean, he's going to lose this, he's going to lose his farm, he's going to lose his TC here. And then he's already lost this town center on this side. So it's well and truly GG for a red player. But you have to give him credit here for certainly trying his damnedest to get back on the water and get this get this game under control. Not Sorry, not get back onto the water, but like get back at his opponent. I mean, he might have tried to get back onto the water later on if, uh, if the game had continued and this aggression had worked out a bit more in his favor. But still, very well played by Gonzalo. And that makes it 3-0 to Gonzalo Pizarro. Who is Gonzalo Pizarro? That's the great question of our time. We're going in hard into game number four here between Gonzalo Pizarro and Leloy. And this has been a very one-sided series so far. Gonzalo Pizarro dominant in all three games we have seen to this point. In fact, Leloy, Leloy looked best in game one. Game 2 and Game 3, Gonzalo steamrolled his opponents. And Game 4 is Leloy's last chance now to fight back. Because it is match point. This is a best of 7. And Gonzalo will take the W here if he wins this game. And that will be a rather one-sided sweep for a fantastic player in blue. But Leloy, he's not out. And he's not. it's not over until the fat lady sings and she ain't singing yet um at least i can't hear her maybe she is i've got my headset on um but leloy here gonna be taking the red once again as the indians this time down to the south gonzalo in the blue he's gonna be taking the indians as well it is a mirror match once again and we've got you know what? i've got to double check the name of this map it's uh, it's slopes yeah the set map for this series is slopes and this is a really fun one I actually am a huge fan of the, the Hidden Cup map pool. I think the maps are fantastic. I think they're really well chosen. And I think they make for some very entertaining games. Um, so we'll take a, a quick rundown of the map while, while things are getting going here. And there's a little bit of chatter here. I'm wondering what they're... Let's ask Robo. What are they asking Robo about? Oh, the, the great mystery. I can't, I can't scroll up. That's all I see. Let's ask Robo. What are they asking Robo? Hey Robo, are you a real human being? That's what that's the first thing that the player the players thought to ask him mid-game here. Um, <laughs> honestly, no idea. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at the map. Um, it's really fun. So slopes has got these two slopes on both sides, top and bottom. And uh, they make for some interesting sort of points of contention, I suppose you could say. Um, because they offer the hill bonus to whoever is out on the edge fighting down. Of course, they go all the way along. So a blue aggression onto red from this side has a hill bonus. Uh, same for this side and across the other side as well. And uh, they also have, on this elevated area, quite a lot of additional food. In this case, you can see all the shorefish. 
and you can see both players docking, uh, sorry, not docking, milling rather, the shorefish as well. The shorefish spawning down to the south, and on the top side, you've got a fat deer patch. So there's definitely space for Mongols here, there's definitely space for all of the Indians, and this is indeed why we see the Indians pick for this map, uh, because they are fishing away here, as you could imagine, taking full advantage of their fishing bonus, um, which kind of makes this a, a sort of mirror match haven, I suppose you could say, while the Indians have this bonus. Maybe Mongols, if the Indians are preferred for another map in the pool, uh, and then they can take the hunt instead. But generally speaking, uh, Indians are going to be taking the fish. And uh, at home, of course, you've got your, your two boar, you've got uh, your sheep and berries. But uh, who cares about sheep and berries when you've got some fat shorefish off to the left-hand side? There's also lots and lots and lots of stone across the middle here. Um, you know, sort of your regular stone mines for both players, and then your, your little extra bonus twos here, as well as some extra bonus gold in the center, as well as extra gold and stone out to the edges. There's quite a lot of resources available on this map, and it's also quite open. Because, although, yes, there are, are a number of tree lines, they're quite small, they're quite uh, spaced out, and you cannot wall on this, uh, this this rocky terrain here. So you can't just wall out to the edge of the map or something and be safe. You kind of have to make little enclosures if you want to wall of, at all, of course. Um, you can wall across the front, as you see Leloy doing here. Um, and this is kind of like a reskin, actually, of a, a, another map um, that I remember seeing a while back that had, like, the marsh, mangrove, shallows terrain in the middle. Um, and we saw a lot of... I can't remember what tournament that was. That was a little while back. We had, like, mangrove shallows in the middle, and there was, like, uh, a lot of demos attacking walls and boats getting into to ecos. Uh, but I like this version a lot more because I don't really like the mangrove shallows terrain too much. I think it's a little bit of a, a gimmick, um, but I don't know if, if anyone can remember the name of that old map. Um, so yeah, both players up to feudal now. Gonzalo is a little bit faster. Scouts perhaps coming out for Gonzalo here, although that said, I do not see a barracks coming up yet. Um, there it is on the left side, okay. And uh, probably going to be trying to aggress this, but if you have a look at his fog of war, he already sees that this is walled in. So plan B is probably going to be to try and hit a wood line or something, or some berries inside of his opponent's base. Feudal Age is in though, Barracks is up, and his feudal building will be a stable. Of course it's going to be a stable. Why would it be anything else? Uh, this is a great map for stable and scouts because um, your opponent can't realistically and reliably wall uh, by the time you can get a couple of scouts over to their side of the map. Um, so good scouting from Gonzalo once again. Liloy on the other hand, relatively little scouting of his opponent. He sees one wood line and that's it. He doesn't even see the the out to the bottom here. He doesn't even see the, the fish. I mean he knows they're there because the map is mirrored but this is something I've noticed Leloy lacking a little bit in general. The scouting of Leloy has always been a little bit on the low side. And interestingly, he's actually bailing on the fish. Oh boy, this spells... This spells disaster for Leloy here, honestly. He's already bailing on the fish, and you know what? He didn't need to bail on the fish, but I think given that his opponent was so much faster to feudal, he might have been concerned of a tower coming up here or something. I'm not sure, but it seems like a huge waste, and it, it sets yourself back a long way to bail on those fish so early on. And uh, Gonzalo, meanwhile, just kind of walling across the front here. It's still open to the right, of course, but he's got map control. He's got presence. And so I think Gonzalo is going to take an advantage here. Now, I don't want to count Leloy out, but given how Gonzalo's played so far this series, um, he is looking like a hot favorite to win right now. And maybe I'm stating the obvious there, but uh, wow, this is this is worrying. Oof, quick wall up for Leloy. Nice reaction with the, the, the gate there and definitely wow. needed because those scouts were getting in otherwise. And now he is fully enclosed. Perhaps we'll see a tower, and I'd like to see this to be honest, on that gold uh, for Gonzalo. I'd like to see him come forward and tower that gold if possible 
over here somewhere. He could deny Leloy gold this game if he is able to get a tower down in that position. Um, no idea if he'll be thinking along those lines. And he's certainly not showing any signs of wanting to build a forward tower just yet as uh, the continued scout production and uh, spearman production goes on. And both players will be sort of harassing each other here a little bit. Uh, but good fight for Gonzalo. Takes the hill and he'll clean up the spearman by the looks of things too. So he's definitely got Leloy on the back foot. But Leloy... Is he still making scouts? I think he might just give up on scout production here because he doesn't actually have much food at all. He had to quickly transition into farms and that sort of slowed him down a little and obviously he doesn't have the, the fish now either. It's also far too much of a risk to come out here and start taking the deer because Gonzalo has more scouts and he has more map control. So it doesn't look like we're going to see that tower. I would have loved to see it. It is a risky tower for Gonzalo to make because, of course, he's right outside of his opponent's stable and barracks and could get rushed down and, and dealt with very quickly if he can't defend it. But uh, it would also be really nice to deny the gold because Leloy would have nothing then. So, Gonzalo here, for now actually, interestingly, falling back a little bit as he might consider be to his transition very soon up to the Castle Age. Yep, Blacksmith coming up. And very typical eco setup here. Basically, 10 wood, 16 food, 5 on gold for now. Wheelbarrow coming in, and as soon as that's complete, Castle Age up as well. And from Castle, he's got a lot of options, but this is a problem. This is a problem. He'll need to make a couple of spearmen in here, perhaps. Um, or for now, maybe try and quick wall them in. Oh, he's trying to trap them. He is trying to trap them in. You've got to admire Gonzalo Pizarro's ambition. He might end up losing a villager here. And he's certainly not going to trade too well against these spearmen with his scouts. So, first sort of sloppy play from Gonzalo. And my god. I thought that was a GG for a second. I thought that was a GG. It's not GG. Don't worry. Because this game goes to part two. So we're going to we're going to load up part 2 now and uh continue on where we left off. So no worries about that. No super ridiculously early GG's in this one, but uh, Gonzalo here is now going up to the Castle Age, fighting with villagers here and he will clean this up after losing I think two villagers in total going down over on this on these fish and maybe Leloy feels like he could go out to the fish soon too. But for now, Leloy, his eco set up for the castle age once he's got the wheelbarrow tech done. And both players will be going up castle very soon. But uh, Gonzalo does have the edge there. It looks like he won't be making a transition into uh, crossbow, which is something that you might see the Indians doing from time to time. They can certainly transition into crossbow, but actually a doubling down on stables and probably then camels because, well, who's going to make a light cab into Indians? I don't think anyone of sound of mind would take that strategy. So uh, camels will certainly be the play for Gonzalo here. And maybe for Leloy, we'll see sort of, we could see camels as well. We could also see pike in and, um, and monks. Certainly also an option. And I like the Indians for their versatility. I know they obviously don't have knights, but um, all in all, they, they're fairly versatile Civ. For now though, both players happy to sort of do minimal feudal aggression and then go up castle. And uh, yeah, Paterno in the chat saying Gonzi Gonzalo here, he is totally exposed. And that is true, but once Castle Age comes in, he'll be dropping down two TCs. So that will certainly help him to defend. And the first TC is going to be coming up out here on the right side. Probably, well, I'd assume against the wood line. And then another TC could go up on the gold at the back here. Could go up on a wood line at the back here. Um, doesn't really matter where. And, and this is a great play from Gonzalo. Using those scouts just to make sure that if Leloy sends any villagers out here to build his second TC on the slope, well, he's there to encounter that and make sure that he takes those villagers down on the way. So that's TC number one. TC number two isn't in sight just yet. Um... And I thought maybe he'd drop it down already, but for now, straight into the camels as expected. And Leloy not really showing his hand. 
Uh, sorry, no, he has shown his hand. He, he, I just clicked on the second stable. So we'll be seeing camels from him as well by the looks of things. Still, though, he knows he can't really get out to the edges of the map to get a TC up. And so he might be forced to get a TC on his main gold here. And uh, maybe one at the back of his base somewhere, maybe on the stone too. But for now, no TC for Liloy, as he indeed does start his camel rider production. Gonzalo, second TC, third TC even. Nowhere in sight just yet either. As he'll lose his scouts there, but he's starting to pressure now a bit more. And again, I'd love to see some more aggression in this area in general. Maybe later on a castle could be coming up on the front. We've seen Gonzalo drop forward castles in the past. But there's Lilloy's Monastery, and I think that's a really sensible play. Of course, he knows he's behind in production here because he was so much slower to the castle age. And the, mon the, the monks, sorry, and the ability to get a couple of conversions here can really help to turn things around. Boy, oh boy, camel attack bonus versus buildings is doing a number on that stable. My goodness. Oh, and that's a risky TC for Gonzalo. Uh, sorry, for Leloy. That's super risky. Gonzalo, 180 right now. Get your butt over here and deny that. Uh, and this is so risky for Leloy. He is, however, going to get the TC up. I mean, he's lucky that it was only a Spearman here before because if he'd gone with the Camels, I think he would have lost everything there. Leloy, however, able to fight now with a decent number of Camels here. But Gonzalo taking the hill bonus, as I talked about earlier on. And all in all there, it's hard to say who's coming out on top. But given that he's got the hill, I'm going to say it's Gonzalo. Speedy Gonzalo here. Coming across the map and wreaking havoc on his opponent's side. I'm, yeah, Leloy under a lot of pressure. But hey, a couple of monks here. A couple of monks there. Little column A, little column B, and uh, he could find himself back in this game. Gonna be tough. Gonzalo's responding with monks of his own, so any conversions are gonna get reconverted anyway. But Leloy has certainly got the right idea. Gonzalo's ahead. Militarily, economically, fundamentally. <laughs> Third TC up on the front for Gonzalo now. And I mean, he, he's in such a great position. He's not a, He doesn't have any kind of pressure on his shoulders at this point to, to make the plays. He could happily sit back right now and just take an ego lead and play it out from there. And could quite easily do so. Gonzalo keeping his eye on the prize and seeing what's going on on this left-hand flank. He's got this scout up here just patrolling to make sure that Leloy doesn't come up to the top side. As Leloy comes in at the back and he's been scouted by Gonzalo here who does get a quick wall off. I mean, can he complete that? A diagonal gate is not going to work, so he's going to have to get a couple more houses up and he'll, he'll finish the wall off very nicely done. I mean, really well done on the quick wall. Of course, Camels with the bonus against buildings are a real threat to quick walls here. And if Leloy had a couple more camels in the mix, that could have been awful and a great palisade as well. Getting a little bit of extra damage on those camels. And you know, at this level of, of play, it's like all those tiny, tiny things starting to add up to make a big difference. All that effort just to kill three or four camels, but it, it makes the difference long term as he's really trying to get into Leloy's head here. And oh, beautiful gates again, trapping those camels. And getting some free damage as he goes. And the... the ah, oh, who, who is Gonzalo? Is it the Viper? It could be. Who is it? <laughs> now, he is losing a couple of villagers at the back, though. Which is... Is a little painful. But he maintains a military lead. 22 to 16. And eco... Uh, uh, sorry, upgrade-wise, they're equal. So, there's no reason for Gonzalo to be too worried about that little raid. Third stable now going up for our blue player. And he's playing so open as well, you know. And that's something that leads me to lean more towards the Viper. I sort of suggested this earlier on. No idea if it could be. We will find out at the end of the series, of course. Which could be sooner rather than later at this rate. As Gonzalo is pulling so far ahead already. Leloy trying to make a push now with the monks here. It's a monk, obviously, for Gonzalo to get a conversion to. And, of course, he's 
Gonna get those conversions off now. The Spearman at this point, not doing huge damage. They're not something that uh, Gonzalo has to worry about. And this could very well be the end of the game right here. As Gonzalo pushes Liloy back decisively. And that is game. Gonzalo, 4-0 victory over Liloy. And uh, he did it very convincingly. I've got to say, in all honesty, I'm a little bit disappointed. I was really hoping for a closer series. But huge credit to Gonzalo for pulling ahead in every single game and maintaining that lead. Liloy didn't put up the best fight in game four, but in game three and in game one, he certainly did. And obviously, if he'd have managed to get a win there, then, well, we'd be saying or seeing a much closer series overall. So let's see your, your guesses in the chat as to who these players are. I would also like to know. Um, so, just so you know, um, I'll give you the players' guesses now. Gonzalo guessed that Liloy was fire. And Liloy guessed that Gonzalo was Nikov. Which is interesting. So, some of you guys have said that uh, you, you, you thought it might be backed and fire. Uh, we've seen some people saying Viper slash Tato. Um, earlier on in the series, in fact, I think it was even game one. Can you remember who I, who I guessed in game one? Who did I say I thought Gonzalo was in game one? Do you guys remember who I said? I'm going to reveal who the players are in a moment here. It's a shame. I suggested in game one that Gonzalo was Hera. And I can confirm I was correct. Gonzalo was Hera. Leloy was Fire. It was Hera versus Fire, and Hera won 4 0.